Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I want to talk about lookup tables. Let me write that out for you so you can see it. Look up tables. So what is a lookup table? Well, let me, I have to kind of explain something else first before we're gonna get into this. So just kind of relax and take a, take a good look. I'm gonna erase this so I can have some room. So let's say we have a membership table or a membership database and we have a user table or members table and within that we have like a membership status, okay? And let's say there's uh, like 10 options, I guess. Let's say you could have like bronze, silver, gold, platinum, titanium, and then like not a member or like trial member. partner or special member or member above all members. I don't know, I'm just kind of making stuff up. Anyways, some people will create what's known as a lookup table. So they'll have a table over here with every single option for the membership. So we could have the memberships. And then within here, we would have each individual row is one of the membership statuses, right? So we have like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm just going to go with nine because it can't fit anymore. Nine individual rows. And then we, so that's one column. The ID, for example, which I mean we could use a different key if we needed, but for this we'll just use an ID. And then we have a column to say what the membership status is. So we could have like gold, silver, bronze, platinum, and so forth. Now, we can have a members table. And then a column within this member uh, table can reference the key of the membership. So remember like one or two videos ago I talked about how keys make connections between tables? Well this is how uh, that's done. Here's an example of a connection using a key. What we would do is we would have like the member, the members uh, user member name or their ID for example and then we have their first name, last name, address, phone number, uh, billing type, whatever it is, and then we would have a column membership, you see? And within here, let's just say for example we didn't have this table, this was gone, we just had this member table. Well, when we have 6,000 rows within here, the membership type would get repeated lots and lots of times. We would have like gold, 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 bronze, platinum, 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 bronze, gold, platinum, bronze. And go on, go on for all of the rows. And that would work. That's, that, that is a possibility for your database. I'm not saying it's going to cause your database to explode or you'll get fired or anything. Well, unless you're told not to do that, you might get fired. That's a possibility for the database design. Now let's think, what kind of relationship is this? One member can have one membership, and a membership can have multiple people having that membership. So it's a one-to-many relationship. The one side is the, uh, the membership, you'd have one of these, and then you would have many people using that. So that means, if we, if you remember from the relationships, we need to take the key from this one and put it over into this table. And now, if we add this new relationship in, we don't have all of that repeating data because all we do is reference one individual row. And there's some other benefits to that, which I'll explain in a second. So now we could be like, rather than gold, 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 silver, bronze, platinum, we could have one, 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 
two, three, four for all of our rows. And we'd still have individual information like Caleb, Jimmy, Jake, Sally, Sammy, and Sarah. Well, when we do this little connection thing, we have a new connection between these tables. We're taking the key of the membership, which is this column right here. So here's our key. And we are taking that key, and we are moving it over into the member table. So now this column right here, within the member table, points back to the key of the membership table. This is known as a foreign key. Now, this will help protect the integrity of our database. That's because there's only nine possibilities for the membership, and if someone puts something else, we could flag an error. The other thing is we can have it to where it will not accept an empty value. And then, if for some reason we decide to change our, like let's say we wanted to change silver to like, I don't know, diamond. Well then, we could change it here. And because this value is not over here, it's only a reference, it will automatically figure it out because you see the key never changed. The key is still one. So one still points using one. So this connection is still here. The value, oh, I'm sorry. I guess it should have been two. Whatever. You get my point though. Uh, we can change the name of gold. We can make it epic. If you want an epic membership. Well now, we didn't have to change 6,000 rows within our member table. We only had to change one row within our membership table, and all these connections stay the same. So the IDs help create better connections between tables, requiring less maintenance for our database, and it also protects our integrity because we don't have to worry about incorrect values within the membership because it's all connected back to the membership table which we change from here. So when we update Epic, it updates every single instance of Epic within our entire database. Or it gives us an error or something. We can set it using what's known as foreign key constraints. F key, F foreign key uh, constraint. So because we're using what's known as a relational database, which is the type of designing we're doing right now, we have relations, tables, and everything is connected across the database. It's not all stored in one individual table, but to protect our integrity of our database, we create connections between keys. That way, we don't have to worry about incorrect data. So what do keys Oops, I dropped my chalk. What do keys do for us? Let's write it out. Well, first thing, they protect our integrity. I made a video over integrity, so if you want to check that out, be sure to do that. So they protect our integrity. How do they do that? Well, we don't have to worry about only some values updating. If you remember, we had the members table, and when we updated gold and we named it epic, it updated every single row within the member table. So it protects all of our values, so it updates less maintenance for us, less incorrect data. What else does a key do? Keeps everything unique. And you might have saw that in the member table, we used the, the uh, key number one multiple times. We had three people with the member ID, I'm sorry, the uh, membership ID one. So three people had gold, for example. Well, it's still unique because they're still only talking about one individual gold. Over here in our membership, we had gold was one of the options. We could have three people
All right, you see? Oh, forgot our arms. These three people can all have a gold membership, and it's still unique because we're only talking about one individual value with three references to that value. If we got rid of these foreign keys and we just had to say what membership status they had, well now, this guy's going to be gold, this guy's going to be gold, this gal is going to be gold. So now we have one, two, three times. That gets rid of the uniqueness from the key. So it protects our uniqueness. It improves our speed. So basically uh, improves functionality of our database. I'm just going to put function. I'm running out of room. And it does a whole bunch of other things. Um, basically, it makes updating easier, so less work for us. Because we don't have to go through manually and check every value, we can just update that individual value. You know? The other thing is it allows for added complexity. Oh, uh, this is a long one. Oh, my hand's getting tired. Oh, okay. I doubt you can even see all that. Okay, so here's just some examples. I'll see, I'll show you how we could say it allows for added complexity. Let's see. I'm gonna redraw the example we had, but I'm not gonna draw a super in-depth, so don't don't wait. Don't I mean don't worry. It won't take that long. We had a members, and then we had the membership. Alright? Now let's focus on this membership table. Let's make it a little bigger, actually. What we had earlier was we had an ID. We had one, two, three, four, and so forth. And then we had the title of whatever they are. So if you wanted to draw this better, you could put the column headers. So we could have like ID. And then we could say name of the membership. And then we could title the table. We could have it membership. Uh, membership. Yeah, so forth. Well, what we can do, we can have added complexity because now we can add a new column and we could say more about the gold membership. So we could say price and we could have a monthly price of $60, for example. If we didn't do this whole lookup table thing and we put it all within our members table, let's see how that would look. Let's try it. All right, let's have the members table. And let's not even have a membership table. Well, now we have the guy with the ID 7, 89, and 3. And we'll have their names be Caleb, uh, Tommy, Tracy. So those are those three people I was talking about with the gold memberships. Well, what, what membership do they have? We got gold, gold, and gold. Now, how much does that cost them? 60, 60, and 60. Just with this little example of three people, we already have four unnecessary values because we have repeating data. We have G, and then we have G twice more. We have 60, 60 twice more. That eliminates the functionality of our database because we're having tons of repeating data. So you might think the best way to do this is get rid of this price. Well, now we get rid of the complexity of our database. And sometimes complexity is a good thing because it allows us to store more information. When we use the common, or when we, I'm sorry, when we use the lookup table, we can just have that as another column. And we can put more things. We could have another column saying, how long does this membership last? We have another column saying, uh, I don't know, special perks, or what can you use within our gym, or what can we use? And uh, are we allowed to bring friends? What's the price for friends? We can do all that kind of stuff within this table and just reference that within the other table. It's only a set number of options, so we reduce the repeating data. If we wanted to do it all, well, we'd have to put each individual com uh, column, and we'd get tons of repeating data. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that is an example of how
case because that would take forever. So that's very common. It's common for things with a set number of options. So like membership type, there's only so many options you can have. States sometimes. Sometimes people do it for uh, sex, male or female. Uh, some people do it for... Mm, I can't think of anything else right off the top of my head. But anytime there's a set number of options, they will often put a lookup table with the ID, the name of that option, or what that option is, like gold, silver, bronze, or male, female, or uh, California, all the other states, Wyoming, uh, Texas, um, Russia, I'm kidding. Well, then we only have a set number of options. So that's, that's the uh, then we could put more information about it. We could say uh, mail and then like what the mail is allowed to do on the website or anything. That allows for extra complexity for our database. So I know this video is like 16 minutes long and I was rambling a ton, but hopefully that cleared things up completely. And yeah, that's all I have to say. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Be sure to subscribe.